The function g is defined by gx equals x squared minus 6x plus 7 for x is greater than 4. By first completing the square, find an expression for the inverse function of g and state the domain of the inverse function of g. So the question gave you an instruction. It says by first completing the square. So you need to complete the square for function g. So it's definitely x minus 3 squared because minus 6 divided by 2 is minus 3. And then you need to take away minus 3 squared and then plus 7. So you can complete the square and get x minus 3 to the power of 2 minus 2. Now that we've completed the square, we can then find an expression for the inverse function of g. And the question at A level, they like to lead you to your answer. So they told you to complete the square first because it's easier to find the inverse function if you complete the square. So when you find the inverse function, you replace the function with an x and you can replace the x in the function with a y or in this case, we're just gonna go to straight to the inverse function. And then all you need to do is make the inverse function or the y the subject of the formula. So if we do that, we get inverse function is equal to 3 plus or minus the square root of x plus 2. So we have two options for the inverse function. It could be the 3 plus the square root version or the 3 minus the square root version. So we need to work out which one this is because functions and inverse functions are one to one. There can only be one inverse function for one function. So we need to pick which one it is. And it says here that the function g is equal to x squared minus 6x plus 7 for x is bigger than 4. So if we try this, you can try substituting a value that is in the domain of x. So a value that is bigger than 4 is 5. So if we substitute 5 into the function, g of 5 is equal to 5 squared minus 6 times 5 plus 7, which is equal to 2. This means that if g of 5 is equal to 2, then if we, put the, if we put 2 into the inverse function, it should give 5. So we can try this for both the inverse functions. So if we try this for 3 plus the square root of x plus 2, it gives 5. Therefore, this one works. Just to be sure, I'm going to substitute it in the other one as well. So if you substitute 2 into the other inverse function, it equals 1. Therefore, it doesn't work. So the inverse function is the positive version. The inverse function is 3 plus the square root of x plus 2. You can also work out which one is the inverse function by sketching the graph as well. So if we sketch the graph of this function, if I factorize it, it's x minus 7 times x plus 1. So it will cross the x-axis at minus 1 and 7. And this is, a, this is a quadratic, so it will be a U shape like that. And we know from completing the square that the minimum point is at 3 minus 2. So the minimum point is there. So the graph should look like this. And the domain is x bigger than 4. So the graph only starts at x equals 4. So we only care about that green bit on the quadratic. The inverse function is the reflection of the graph in the line y equals x. So if you roughly sketch the reflection, the reflection of that part of the curve looks like this, which corresponds to the positive version of the square root. If we had 3 minus the square root of x plus 2, then it should go downwards like that. Since the reflection is positive like that, we know for sure that the positive one, the I mean 3 plus the square root, has to be the inverse function. Okay, so next we need to find out the domain of the inverse function. In terms of definitions, 
the domain of the inverse function is the range of the original function. So all we really need to do is find the range of gx. And we've already completed the square for gx. Right? As a completed square, gx is equal to x minus 3 to the power of 2 minus 2, and the domain is x greater than 4. So if I resketch that graph again, the graph looks like this, and we only care about the graph from x equals 4 onwards, like over here. Therefore, we have a minimum point for the graph at the point x equals 4. And if you continue the graph until positive, until positive infinity, so if you keep on going to the right, the graph of a quadratic will just continue to go upwards. Therefore, the range must start at the value corresponding to x equals 4, and it will go upwards all the way to positive infinity on the y-axis. So this point onwards, to so the point g of 4 onwards, therefore the range of gx is equal to gx is greater than g of 4. To find the value of g of 4, we just need to substitute x of 4 into the g function. That is 4 minus 3 to the power of 2 minus 2, which equals minus 1. Therefore, the domain of the inverse is equal to the range. Therefore, the domain must be x is bigger than minus 1 because the range will be gx is bigger than minus 1.